The following program is sponsored by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. Thank you for joining us today on Kingdom Connection. I believe today what God is going to speak to you can bring healing to your body, salvation to your life, freedom to your soul. It can heal your mind. It can cause you to overcome the blood of the Lamb and the power of the blood covenant. Listen to this and let God speak to you. Look with me in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 3. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took off the robe that was on him and gave it to David. And he gave him his armor, even to his sword and his bow and his belt. And David went out wherever Saul sent him and behaved wisely and set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all of the people, also in the sight of Saul's servants. There are several covenants, but perhaps the most powerful covenant of all in the Bible is what is known as the blood covenant. The word covenant in Hebrew means to cut. It means to cut, to shed blood. Isn't that interesting? That the word covenant means to cut. The blood is the main subject of the Bible. The Old and the New Testament are really the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. And they were provided, both of them, by blood. The Old Covenant by the blood of animals. The New Covenant or New Testament was provided by the blood of Jesus Christ. The story that E.W. Kenyon Tells is one of David Livingston, who was a missionary, very famous in, in Christian history. How that he went to Africa and he wanted to reach people who had never heard the gospel. And in order to go into regions that were dangerous and have protection, he had to make an agreement with the main chief over those regions. He was a very powerful man. He went to him and he said through an interpreter, I want to make an agreement with you. And the chief took a knife, true story, and cut his wrist. And then David Livingston, whose body is buried in Westminster Chapel in England, he, in order to reach souls, cut his self and blood began to pour from his vein and they mixed the two together. And the people started rejoicing and screaming, the natives, And a celebration broke out. And then before David Livingston left, there was the second part of the blood covenant. First was the cutting, the shedding of blood, the mixing of the blood. They became blood brothers. And then there would be the exchange of gifts. The chief looked down and he looked through all the possessions that David Livingston had. And He had one thing that the chief wanted. He wanted his goat. He had a pet goat. That was all he cared about. He he could care less if he took his tent or his gun or something else. He just wanted that goat. And the very thing that he loved the most was the thing, according to Livingston, that the chief demanded. And he handed over that goat. And then the chief reached in and took a staff that had his emblem carved in it and handed it to David Livingston. And he then set out with his guides into treacherous jungles of Africa. And to this day, the, the miracles, you know, just a, just a quick thing. It's interesting that when David Livingston died, England sent a whole force over to retrieve his body and bring it back to be buried in Westminster But when they got there, his heart had been cut out and the natives said, you can have his body, but his heart belonged to Africa. And they buried his, his, his heart in the dirt of Africa because he had such a heart for the souls of the nation of Africa. And what was amazing is when this man, David Livingston got out into the deep thick of the jungle 
And at one place he tells of being surrounded by hostile, hostile people who were ready with bows pulled and spears ready to throw. And suddenly he reached in and he held up that staff that had the emblem of the king. And when he did, they saw that wound, that scar that was forever there on his wrist where he had cut a covenant with the king. And they knew if we harm him, we're, we're harming the king. If we attack him, we're attacking the king and all of his mighty forces. And so they Instantly, when they saw the mark, the scar, and they saw the emblem of the king, they dropped to their knees, dropped their weapons, and let him go through. And he changed the nation of Africa with the gospel of Jesus Christ. What a beautiful picture of a blood covenant. Jesus said, when he entered into the upper room with his disciples for the last supper, he said in Luke, the 23rd chapter, he said, this cup is the cup of the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. Do you understand what he was saying? He was saying, we're entering into a blood covenant. And the old covenant is the Old Testament. And it's been all about the keeping of the law and the rituals and legalism and you had to earn it and you had to work for it and you had to deserve it and it was and if you messed up you could take the blood of an animal and the blood of an animal would never take away your failure it would just roll it over to a new year but Jesus said this time on this cross this day this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you. And we just read over that. And we don't understand. He was saying to them, they fully understood blood covenants. And he said, I'm entering in this, this cup is my blood. This bread is my body. And I'm entering in to this. And what I want you to see is simply this. In this story, there's something remarkable that I read. I chose the fact to tell you today and start out in 1 Samuel because we see something beautiful and powerful in the covenant that Jonathan, the king's son, made with David. The Bible said that Jonathan said to David, and David said to Jonathan, let's make a covenant. And they entered into a blood covenant, and when they did, because the word covenant means cut, Watch this. Jonathan does something strange. He takes his robe off and he hands it to David. And then he takes his garment off, it says in another place, if you keep reading, it says he took his garment off and he handed it to David. Possessions. And in another place, it said he took his sword, his weapons, and he gave them to David. It's really a powerful thing when you understand what is that, what that really is about. Because the robe spoke, it was not just a garment, a regular clothing. It was, it identified Jonathan as the king's son. It was one that wherever he went, people would look and see that particular robe. And it meant royalty. And it spoke of his position. It spoke of who he was. It spoke of the power and authority that he had. And really what Jonathan was saying is, I am the rightful heir. My father, Saul, is king of Israel, but I want you to take my position. I want you to take the authority and the position that I have. I'm giving you my robe. And that came through a blood covenant. That's what Jesus Christ has done for you and me. He says, when, when the king's son, the king of kings' son, Jesus Christ, went to the cross, the first thing he did is he traded positions and he said, I'm giving you this place of position so that you don't come before the throne as a beggar, but you come as a child of the king. You come as a daughter of the king, a son of the king. You come clothed in my righteousness. You come with boldness and authority because of what the blood has done. Not only that, but he said, I'm giving you my garment. And that speaks of possessions. 
That speaks of meeting the needs. The blood covenant not only changes your position, the blood covenant not only gives you authority to walk boldly into the throne of grace because of the shed blood, but it also says that he will supply your needs, that the possessions that I have through the cross, what are those possessions? Through the cross, through the blood covenant, there is healing. Through the blood covenant, there is deliverance for the mind. There is peace. There is joy. There is healing for broken places in our life. All of these possessions, they come through the riches of the cross. They come because Jesus gives us his righteousness and gives us a position that we can receive freely the grace and the forgiveness and the healing and the miracles of God. He gives us all of his possessions. In my name, you can heal the sick. In my name, you can recover. In my name, you can see miracles. And then, as if that wasn't enough, he takes his sword, Jonathan did, and he gave it to David, making the blood covenant. What a picture. What a picture. What he was really saying was, from this day forward, since we've entered into this sacred blood covenant, I give you my sword means this, that whoever fights you, fights me. Whoever comes against you and tries to destroy you, they're trying to destroy me. And just like they attack you, I will come and I will fight with you and I will fight for you because the battle is not yours alone, but I'm going to fight it with you. And the blood covenant says, I not only give you pos position, I not only give you royal position and possessions, I supply all of your needs, healing, health, blessing, success, goodness, joy, all that you need. But the blood covenant says through the giving of the sword, it simply says, I give you my power. I give you my name. I give you the Holy Spirit. I give you the blood and I give you my sword. I give you my word. And when you speak it and when you enforce it, the blood covenant stands behind it. And if that's not enough, there's the personhood. That the blood covenant not only says, see, the devil wants you to fight in, in your own position, in your own righteousness, in your own possessions and what you have. He wants you to fight and use that. That, that if you get in a battle, you have to fight with your possessions and, and your sword and, 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 and all, of, all of your positioning that you can earn. But that's not what... A blood covenant is. The blood covenant says, you don't earn any of this. I freely give it to you. I freely give it to you. So David, David becomes king. Saul dies. Jonathan tragically dies, but he made a covenant. He made a covenant, a blood covenant with David. And now David is sitting on the throne. And as David is sitting on the throne, he asks a question. I don't know what made him think about it, but he was just sitting there probably in the palace thinking of the faithfulness and goodness of God. And one day he reaches to grab his cup and when he does, he sees that scar. He remembers that he made a blood covenant with the king's son. And he asked a powerful, powerful question. Second Samuel 9. Is there anyone in the house of Saul that I might show kindness to him? Listen to these words. For Jonathan's sake. He said, is there any family left of King Saul that I can show kindness? Listen to that. That's a covenant word. Show kindness to for Jonathan's sake, who was Jonathan? The one he made a blood covenant with. <laughs> really, what all the people in the palace thought is this is revenge time. Because in Bible days, the first thing a king would do if he over, had an overthrow and, and took over a kingdom is he would hunt out 
anyone who would be the rightful heir and he would kill all the seed royal. He would kill all the children. He would kill all the sons who could potentially down the road cause him a problem. He'd just go kill them all. And so when, when he may ask this question, is there any one of the house of Saul uh, that I might show kindness to for Jonathan's sake? They're all like, yeah, right. Here comes the purge. Here comes, this, this is going to be like those shows on, on National Geographic when the lion, the new lion comes in and kills the old lion. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And y'all know what he does? He then goes and kills all the little cubs because he didn't want any problems with it. That's what they think is about to happen. Listen now. And somebody spoke up and said, there's only one left of Jonathan's house. And his name is Mephibosheth. It's a tragic story. When Saul was killed and you were crowned and the people were bringing you back to the throne, the nurse picked Mephibosheth, the baby, up and was running out of the nursery for her life, knowing the child was in danger. And she tripped and fell on the baby and crushed it. And the child is crippled. And now... He lives in a place called Lodibar, which means barren, dry pastures. He's out in the middle of the nowhere, and it's fruitless. It's a, it's a barren place. It's dark and gray, and he lives in a shack, and he eats out of a tin can, and it's pitiful. He crawls around all day in the dirt hut that he lives in. And David says to his mighty men, Take chariots and horses and go and fetch him out. I like that word, fetch him out. And here comes, here comes the mighty men rolling up in chariots and horses and power and strength. And I could see, I could see Mephibosheth, poor thing, crawling on that dirt floor of that old hut and pulls himself up to the window pane and looks out and he sees this, these mighty soldiers and he thinks to himself because all he had ever been told was be afraid of David. Hate David. He's your enemy. He's going to hurt you. He's going to get you. One of these days, he's going to try to wipe you out and give you what you deserve. So he was trembling and he thought, this is it. They take him and put him in the chariot and bring him back. But when he gets there, they don't take him to a prison. They take him to a palace. He walks in and they say, His Highness, um, would you like your bath hot or lukewarm? We have all of your new clothes laid out, Versace, Gucci, whatever you want. We have it all here. And by the way, dinner will be served in the main dining room of the presidential palace. And you are the honored guest at the king's table. And they bathe him and they clothe him and they help him and carry him down and they sit him at the table right beside the king. And he's sitting there wondering, why? Why am I here? Look at this food. I've never seen such food. Oh my God, look at this place. And, 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 and the king says, do you like your new home, son? I love it. I love it. He says, you know, you're never going to leave here. You'll eat here continually at my table. You know, you belong here. You know, I, I, I made a, and, and, and he's thinking, why, 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 why? And all of a sudden, Mephibosheth sees it. He sees the scar. And he realizes the only reason I'm here is because dad, my father, Jonathan, made a blood covenant. And that's why I'm here. And Jesus says to every person here, I know you, I know your name, and I give you a new position. I give you the possessions you need. I give you the power and the weapons that you need. And I give you my personhood through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I make a covenant with you, the blood covenant. And the secret of the Lord is with them that fear the Lord. And he will show them his covenant. It reaches to the highest mountain. Oh, and it flows to the Lord.
I believe today is one of the most important messages that that you'll ever hear. And I know it's speaking to you. I know that what you're hearing is having an impact on your life. God is not angry with you. He's waiting on you today to turn to him with all of your heart. He's a loving God and he's calling you closer to him today. And just like I preach, you can be adopted into the royal family and you can enjoy the blessings of the blood covenant that Jesus made with his own blood and his own body when he hung on the cross for you and me. If you want to make Jesus Lord of your life, I would love and I would be honored to lead you in this prayer today. It's time for change in your life. Pray this prayer with me right where you are. Say, Lord Jesus, today I give you my life. I need you. I need your peace. I need your help. I need you to come into my life. Show me who I am. Let the power of the blood covenant cover me and my family. I receive this gift in Jesus' name and through his blood. I am free, I am forgiven, and I am blessed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You're now, according to God's word, if you prayed that prayer in faith, you're now part of the family of God. You know, Jesus left us with a calling to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And we take that calling very, very seriously. And you can help us. You empower us to do that through your generous gifts to Kingdom Connection. We're able to preach to over 200 nations through this broadcast and to anyone with internet access, they can watch us on social media channels. That's because of your help. We also produce inspirational resources, and then we go above and beyond to support life-giving projects, mission works around the world. Well, in our closing moments together, I wanna thank you so much for helping us be a blessing to the nation of Israel. We're building critical bomb shelters in one of the most dangerous war-torn areas of the world, the Eshkol region of Israel. These are precious people and they need your help. They need to know that there's Christians in America and all over the world who care, who love them and who stand with them. Standing with Israel, standing with the Jewish people is a biblical mandate. And God said, I will bless those that bless Israel I will curse those that curse Israel. And I thank you for praying about that. Be generous and help us do that. This is a great large project. And I believe God will bless people who get involved in it. It will be a blessing and save families and save lives. God bless you. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time on Kingdom Connection. God's promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has always been a promised land. Today, the Jewish people living in Israel are now standing on that same promise. But many of the Jewish families living along the Gaza Strip in Israel face ceaseless militant attacks. These families stand firm and defend their land 
because they know it's God's promise to them. God also promised a special blessing for those who blessed Israel in Genesis 12. You can experience that blessing and help fulfill biblical prophecy in the Holy Land when you partner with Jensen Franklin Media Ministries in our newest effort to construct fortified bomb shelters for this region in Israel. Each one of the fortified shelters are strategically located to provide maximum safety during these senseless attacks. As our thank you for your gift of $50 or more, we want to bless you with the Healing Tree Bundle. Through this uplifting resource bundle, you're going to discover the wonderful blessings God has for you. Our thank you for your gift of $500 or more. We want to bless you with a Healing Tree gift set featuring Jensen's uplifting book, Acres of Diamonds. Our thank you for your gift of $1,000 or more. We want to bless you with the Healing Tree Collection. To thank you for your generosity towards this ministry and your heart for the Jewish people, we want to plant a tree in your honor in Israel and send you a beautiful Comfort My People coin made with soil from Jerusalem, as well as the many other resources in this Power Pack Collection. Your gift will save and help fulfill biblical prophecy today. Call now or visit us online. Sharice and I want to invite you to join us on the Holy Land Tour in 2021, December the 1st through the 10th. I'll be teaching from the sites and be filming some special programs that you'll get to be a part of. You'll get an amazing tour that will change your perspective and show you the Bible like you've never seen before. I'm excited about Israel, the Holy Land. Pray about if you should go, it's going to be an amazing trip. This program has been sponsored by friends and partners of Jensen Franklin Media Ministries. We hope you've enjoyed this teaching by Jensen Franklin and thank you for your continued support of this ministry. Your prayers and financial support make these programs possible. <laughs> about this message and other ministry resources, visit us online at jensenfranklin.tv.